welcome to the XY Advisor podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. On today's episode, Ben chats with Rachel O'Connor, advisor and mum to two young boys who started her own advice business just three months ago. Yep, you heard right. So how on earth does Rachel juggle two kids under two and a brand new business? And what went into the planning phase before jumping headfirst into self-employed life? As you scale your advice business, are you frustrated with the amount of compliance, paperwork, and staffing issues? Virtual Business Partners specializes in helping financial services firms in four areas, admin, power planning, bookkeeping, and marketing. Virtual Business Partners work with you to get your business offshore ready. This includes identifying what tasks need to be done locally and what functions can be managed offshore. Advisors find they can reduce back office costs by between 50 and 75% and significantly improve their task turnaround times. For more information, go to virtualbusinesspartners.com.au. All right, so I was going to say Wilco, but uh, I no, feel like it, yeah. yes. Uh, O'Connor? The Conster. <laughs> oh, no, that's actually not good. That's not great. Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't probably go so well. Let's stick with Rach. Rach. Rach, thank you very much for joining us for uh, this Plan Produce Profit series. Today we're talking all about planning and uh, your, we were just having a chat just before and uh, I've recently had... Two kids, yeah, uh, two boys. One in 2017, one in 2018, yeah. and uh, in 2019, you've given birth to the business. <laughs> the business, boom. Yeah. So uh, three months in. So yeah, uh, yeah interesting times. Uh, you have the added complication of uh, juggling a, a two-year-old and a ten-month-old yes. at the same time. So. Um, I'm sure we'll spend a little bit of time talking about that. Yeah, uh, yeah it's pretty busy. But, um, but yeah, th- thanks very much for, for joining us and, yeah, great to have you. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, so three months in, look, I'm, I'm keen to get into how you've gone about planning your business. I know that you, because we caught up, um, what was that, it's been six months ago or something, yeah. you know, when you're in that planning stage. So you've yeah. been giving it a thought for, for a while. So I'm keen to sort of unpack that and see how you approach things, what's happened, what uh, what happened to the plan when you, uh, when you know, the hit, the hit the ground, I suppose, as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, but before we get into that, a couple of quick ones for you. Time, I say time, but we just covered that. So you, yeah. so you started the business? Three months ago. Yeah. Three months ago. April. Yeah. Cool. And uh, your team? Just me. I'm the team. Flying solo. Great. Yeah, that's that's uh, did the same thing for the first 12 or 11 months of, of my business. And I think you sort of need to until you figure figure out your, your feet to a degree. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. And um, what uh, what's the time that you're spending on the business? Because clearly you've got some uh, pretty significant family commitments. Yeah. Um, so officially I'm working three days a week. Um, so the boys are in daycare three days a week. Okay. Um but then there's a fair bit of spillover with um, I'm on my email every day. So the boys' nap time on Monday, Tuesday is, is also work time. And then at the moment, there's a bit of Sunday, Sunday work going on as well. Great. And your progression, so how long have you been advising? I've been advising for I think it's about eight years. I've been an advisor and about 10 years in the industry. Cool. And so who's your ideal client and what do you do with it? Uh, so ideal client, I guess, would be um, someone with a bit of complexity, um, someone that appreciates and values advice, someone that wants to delegate. Um, and what do I deliver? I guess trying to deliver a comprehensive service covering mm-hmm. all of the important stuff, cash flow, budgeting, bit of super, tax, insurance, you know, the usual. All the things, yeah. yeah. So pure FP. So no uh, mortgage broking, nothing like that, right? No mortgage. Yeah. Yeah, pure financial planning. Cool. So uh, tell us, before we get into the question, I've got a few questions here around how you've gone about planning your business, but tell us a bit about your story, your journey, and how you've, how you've ended up where we are now. 
Yeah, so I started actually as an accountant. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm a chartered accountant. Um, so I did accounting at uni, did a few months of accounting, and then realised pretty quickly. It all, it all makes sense now. <laughs> I shouldn't admit to that. Um, no, so then I realised pretty quickly that I, I kind of wanted to be more in the like, forward-looking stuff than, you know, what's happened in the past. So I moved across to advice, um, worked at a couple of firms over the years. Um, the last three years I've been at a firm uh, sort of boutique advisory looking after high net worth clients. Um, which was great. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, on the fits, we were office and, buddies. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. I kicked this out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I had Billy in 2017. And while I was on maternity leave, I was approached by a friend who was had just recently started his financial planning business, um, had then ended up going into something else and basically wanted someone to run his little book, which was at that stage about 14 clients. Um, we spoke about it, but it wasn't the right time for me. But in starting that conversation, you know, talking to him about how mm. he'd gone about it, I started to think, maybe I could do this. And being on maternity leave, you've got a lot of time to think. <laughs> your hands are always busy, but your brain is relatively <laughs> idle at times. So just sort of started tipping over and then trying to go back to work with Billy being I went back when he was about six months old and the juggling and sort of the compromises that you had to make um, to kind of keep the career going with the baby at home. It just started to become more and more. I just started to think I'd really like to have a lot more control over how I spend my time. I probably underestimated how hard I'd be working. I think I, I had some delusions. I did yes, tell you, you this. Warned me. You did <laughs> warn me. Um, so I'm definitely working more than I realised, more than I initially anticipated I would be at this stage. But I'm loving it because the hours are on my terms and the things that are important to me I'm able to do so I can, you know, do the swimming lessons and I can do the dinners and things like that and I yeah. can outsource some of the things that I don't <laughs> love so much, like yeah. the cleaning. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, been the journey. So then... All of this was kind of plans coming together. Um, found out I was pregnant with my second son, um, and so kind of thought, oh, maybe maybe two young kids means I should put this on the back burner mm. for a little while. But then another friend who's um, an accountant approached me because he had been talking to the other friend who had wanted me to work in his business. Um, and found out that I had had this idea that I might like to start a business and he was looking for somewhere to refer some of his clients and so he was really keen and really encouraged me and gave me a bit of a, a bit of a shove along and it seemed like a good opportunity and I thought well is there ever really the perfect time to kind of take a plunge and take a bit of a risk so yeah just thought why the hell not Awesome. That's yeah. a, I think all great businesses would probably build on uh, that motto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny how the how you can get that that one thing and it spurs the thought and then you start to think more and more. I know that yeah. I was the same when I was – I never really thought I'd start a business. Neither did I. Uh, yeah, and then I was working at another company and they were like, oh, well, you can become a partner in the business. I was like, oh, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Like get a bit of security and uh, get, have, have, have a bit more control or something, maybe work a bit less. You know, I'm working my board shorts. So yeah, a little yeah. Bit, I don't know <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it got the, got the wheels turning and, and that didn't work. As uh, Like it didn't, it didn't work out with your thing as well. But then I was yeah. like, oh, I'll start. Um, actually, yeah, I think I want to do that. Yeah. I'll start in, I'll plan a business and uh, I'll start in 12 months. And then, uh, and then I was like, go to work. I'm like, oh. I don't like having to wear socks. I started, <laughs> started nine months. <laughs> and then it just got shorter and shorter. And then I'd be like, yeah, in my notes about two weeks later, I think. And, uh, yeah. And from there. So. so you were from having the sort of the, the sort of initial spark of an idea to quitting your job with you two weeks. Yeah, it was about that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I thought about it. I, I Well, we, we, we I was trying to buy into the business for a year. So yeah. we started talking about it. We started working through it. We uh, we engaged accountants to help with the structuring and how it was going to work and it was going yeah. to be like a, you know, get some, earn some type setup and 
we spend a fair bit of time and, and money as well, which is annoying on mm. uh, on working through this thing. And then at the same time, the guy that I was working with, he hired his buyer's agent, and uh, yeah. and then I, they started like yeah, like not re- like recommending stuff. I thought was, was pretty average, and yeah. they were expecting that I would endorse the recommendations because it was yeah. like those clients. And then yeah. I was like, oh no, I can't do that. And then. Became, it became very difficult for me to stay there. So I had the idea, oh, yeah, I'm going to go do it myself. And then I thought I'll plan it, I'll save money, I'll do the things. But then it was just, I made a joke about socks, but it was really those other things. And I've got my clients coming to me going, is this good? And I'm going, oh, I can't say yes. It was difficult, yeah. I mean, it was difficult to say no, but I had to help them figure out that they should say no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but it all, uh, yeah, it all happened pretty quickly. Yeah. Thankfully, with some good support from the guys at the, at the Wealth Network and Dean yeah. and Dean and Paul, and uh, that made it a lot easier. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it all happened pretty quickly. I yeah. was on a panel with Jess Brady, who you work with, your office buddies with now. And, yeah. And and she was so she come from BDM Land, and they were talking about how they planned their business. So I had her on this series as well, yeah. and. Uh, they spend all this time and run the focus groups and do the things and save the money and do the yeah. thing. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, but it works without doing all that as well. And you sort of figure it out yeah. on the fly. So yeah, um, there are a lot of different ways to go about it. But mm, Yeah. Well, I basically planned it like I um, basically, so I went on maternity leave with Finn and then spent the six months with Finn being little, um, planning it in like, basically setting it up in that time. Yeah. So that took about six months. Well, okay, cool. Well, that was my next question was like, how have you gone about that process for yeah. figuring out, you know, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? Who are you going to work with? Yeah. So it was all done between naps? Yeah, basically all <laughs> done during nap time. Um, so, yeah, I just started. I, where did I start? I started with um, my first couple of things to, that I worked on were um, probably not even important at all, but like, the name and the logo, which I think is sort of yeah. like totally not important, but at the time it felt very important. Um, and then uh, try to find a dealer group. So trying to set up um, during the Royal Commission yeah. was, it was all like, you know, every night you're watching the news and the headlines were, you know, pretty alarming and stuff like that. So I felt like I wanted to do a lot of DD on going yeah. back with um, which dealer group I'd go with. So that was, that was a big one. Um, on your license with Madison Financial Group. Right. How are they go? Uh, they're good. They're great. So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, they've, they've been they've been really good for me. It was about um, like the culture and and the compliance framework was, yeah. was important to me. Like I'm I'm the kind of person I like to follow the rules. Mm. Happy to follow the rules. Yeah. Um, but that's think, good. That's very good. Yeah. Our financial <laughs> advice. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the tricky thing with all of the rules that we work. Um, with in financial advice is you could you can be doing your absolute best and fall down in a very obscure way. Yes. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of regulation that we have to be across, and so mm. yeah, having the right support to navigate all of that was important to me. Great. Okay, so you got the you got the name, the pretty logo, the dealer yep. group. Yep, got the dealer group, and then um, what came next? Then basically, um, I just was sort of holding off this friend of mine, the accountant, like, you just got to let me be for a little bit because my baby's still really tiny. And yeah. I'm not going to start picking <laughs> on your clients until he's six months old. Um, and so I just, like, I sort of firmly kept to that. Yeah. And um, he kept sending me through details. It's like, oh, why don't you just talk to this person? And I was like, no, yeah. you know, looking after the baby. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, basically as soon as, as soon as Finn was six months old, he went into daycare for a couple of days a week, two days a week. Yep. And that's when I started calling all those people that my friend had been asking me to call. Right. Awesome. And so what went into, because you've been, you know, you've done a lot of work in the investment advice space and then, yeah. and then, uh, and then some solid time working with, you know, a whole bunch of different types of people from yeah. that. How did you go about planning what you were going to do and how you were going to do it? Yeah. Um, so I guess on, so you're talking like investment strategy? No, 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 more from a, from an advice perspective. So yeah. like how are you, what's the, is, you know, is the process, have you figured out exactly what the structure process is yet or are you I guess like, I'm still kind of working that out and yeah. it's been a little bit, um, so the clients that are coming through from the accountant are mainly SMSFs okay. um, or some are SMSFs but they're kind of in that kind of retiree or pre-retiree type 
right. age group. Yeah. Um, so that has been, you know, that sort of one group of clients. But then I guess where I have had more of an interest and more um, of a passion is with kind of our age group and yep. doing the stuff that makes our life great and yes. easy and things like that. So that's what actually interests me. So um, I guess at the moment I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, Kind of working in two like two groups of clients. Yeah. And so, um, from a process point of view, I was really keen on having a good um, platform. I wanted everything on platform. I don't want to be like, uh, you know, trying to manage direct equities and yes. you know having loose bank accounts around the place and stuff like that. I wanted to have that, um, you know, that kind of base to yeah. plug everything makes into. It yeah, yeah, make it makes it easier from an admin point of view, and also that you know translates to what you can charge. You know, making it. You know, even though you pay the or the clients pay the fee for that admin platform. Yeah. If Saves it makes the, if it makes it easier for me to do my job, then my fees are more expensive. Yes. So, um, plus I also wanted it like I wanted the business to be something with the kids. It needed to be flexible. I needed to know that it could all be online um, mm-hmm. and in one place. Knowing that I'd be in like a shared office and things like that, I was not going to have a mailing address and yeah. piles of paper and stuff like that. So it needed to be fairly streamlined and that's where the, I thought that the using a platform would make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that kind of what you're yeah. asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I uh, had Darren Johns uh, came in from his the AFA Packs of the Year one a couple of years back. Okay. Total Legend runs yeah. his business over on the beach. It's pretty small. They, they work with like something like a hundred clients and he's yeah. got a couple of staff and yeah. uh, but, but he's just keeps just keep it small if they work in a small office and he came in he came in here which we're, 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 we're doing this podcast with we work uh, where our office is and uh, he looked in the office and he goes where are all the files <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't believe it he couldn't believe it to the point that he after he left he sent me an email the next day and said how much do I have to pay for your wife to come into our business <laughs> and help us to, to, to get rid of all of our files? I was like, yep. you can't afford it. <laughs> I can't afford her. If I can't, yeah. you can't. <laughs> no. She's, yeah, she's probably busy enough for now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got a few things she's juggling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I mean, that was, you know, a big thing. Like if you know that you're going to be sometimes logging on from the lounge room and then other days you're going to be in a shared office and then other days you're going to be in the client's office or sometimes I'm in the accountant's office. Mm. Obviously, I'm not going to have a whole lot of paper files um, mm. that I'm wanting to contend with. So having that, like, efficiency of this kind of this streamlined business, I guess, is really important. Wanting to absolutely, wherever possible, do online applications and, you know, minimise yeah. the print and sign and scan sure. and all of that sort of stuff. So, yeah. I think as well that's what clients these days are kind of expecting of us. Definitely. So yeah, it makes it easier. I know that they guys like just from an environmental point of view, people like look at the the stack of forms. We just transition our banking providers to all paperless and it's just yeah. so much better. Yeah. Plus it does say it costs you less. Oh, yeah. you know, work in a co working space, it's like yeah. unless you're printing yourself and stuff. Uh, it's not cheap. It's, it's not cheap. So yeah, that all that all helps. Yeah. So t- so tell us. So you've got your kids are still super young, yes. uh, and you've been, you're working. Uh, they're they're. So you're working three days a week. Three days a week. They're in daycare. Yeah. And how do you manage that? How do you manage that juggle with your clients? With finding the time? Since I know for me, it's hard enough working. You know, trying to find time to work on the business instead of yeah. in the business. Yeah. And, but also just the keeping up with client, yeah. you know, the emails and inquiries and phone calls and stuff. Yeah. Um, so the answer is it's, it's tricky at times. Um, <laughs> but what I, so I've got the three days that the boys are in daycare and then on Monday and Tuesday when they're not in daycare, they do have, they're both, because they're young, they do both have their afternoon nap. Mm-hmm. So like twelve thirty to two thirty generally, if all things going to plan, <laughs> the, stars the boys sleep. And so okay. that's my opportunity to get on my emails. And so yeah. from my client's point of view, I don't even know if any of them know that I work three days a week. Right. Some of them might now. But, <laughs> um, I yeah, so I'm I am able to be responsive every day, every business day. Yeah. Um, the other uh, the other way that I'm juggling it, I guess I've got my husband like very much on board. Um, so yeah. he he does um, a lot of the heavy lifting as well, um, yeah. and then de- just delegating as much as I can. But like I said, like there are some things I don't need to be doing. Like I don't clean the house. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a cleaner. Um, you know things like that where 
it doesn't necessarily bring me any joy. It doesn't, you know, serve yeah. the boys to necessarily for me to be doing that. Yeah. And that's what I delegate. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, what's what have you learned from an like from an efficient some of all about like efficiency and productivity? Yeah. Is there any yeah. any good hacks that have come out of that? Actually, just in the last couple of weeks, I okay, so like three weeks ago, like my inbox was exploding. Um, you know, I was just frazzled ads mm. and like the more work I, that was starting to come through, the mm. more I was getting stressed and just yeah. like, like clicking through emails <laughs> but not actually doing anything. Yeah. Um, and then I was talking to a friend who got me absolutely whipped into shape and she was like basically so I'm using my calendar more to like block out times, yep. make sure there's nothing in my inbox, just deleting everything yep. um, and attaching it to like the calendar um, appointment which you know, say I'm working on something for a client rather than having five emails in the inbox. If I've set aside three hours tomorrow to do that, then I yeah. attach the five emails okay. to that and oh, then yeah. delete them out of my inbox. Cool. Yeah. That's making a big difference. So that, yeah. like, I'm, I feel like my head is a lot more organised because I'm, I know, like, if something comes in, I allocate the time to it. I know that that time is set aside. Yeah. And then I don't think about it again until the reminder comes into my calendar that I've got to do that. Yeah. So that I just feel like it's been a whole lot of um, brain space mm. bandwidth for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, aside from that, I'm only three months in. So one of the things I'm I'm really conscious of is not growing too quickly. Yeah. Um. So being only part time, I'm not going to shoot the lights out in year one. Um. I just have got set myself a target, so you know, hopefully I can break even. Um, mm. and maintain some sanity yeah. and just build from there. So, the, I mean, the goal is to really try to constrain it, keep it part-time until the boys start kindy, and then from there I hope to expand mm. it to a full-time gig. Good. I think it's probably good to go slow when you're doing the foundations because uh, I know for us that we went, it's easy when you, like I had me for a year and then Yang, my wife, come yeah. in. Uh, another year and you can just sort of figure that stuff out when it's just like just you or just just you and something like your partner yeah but then when uh when things go like when you build momentum then you go holy crap this is like it really highlights the the any gaps and um or any bottlenecks yeah as well so yeah hopefully you can streamline those things yeah i'm finding like at the moment um there's a like it's i it is as, for as much planning as I did, you can only plan so much, like some of the things you just yeah. have to get on the ground and do. Yeah. And there's so much as well that I'm doing that I never appreciated was actually being done by someone when I worked <laughs> in a team. Like yeah. when you've got a team of people that are helping you to, you know, look after all of those clients, like things that have to be done that are absolutely essential but you never notice if your support team is yeah. doing a good job. Yeah. Those have been the things that have kind of thrown me. Like how do you create an invoice for a client? Yeah. You know, I didn't know how to do that until <laughs> it didn't even occur to me that I needed to do that until I you know, got started. So like, there have been some things where I'm just like, I'm just learning as I go. Fake right. it till you make it. So. Yeah. I still don't know how to send an invoice. So <laughs> I can show you. I have an amazing bookkeeper. Maybe we'll yeah, do that for us and yeah, you know, I book it as a boss, so she, yeah. she does all that stuff for us. Yeah. Uh, it all helps. So. Yeah, yeah. And so you you talk about the, the 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 learning since actually like you know when you hit when you hit it's great to have a great plan the the analogy of the battle plan but um you know you know the least when you're planning and then when uh when you hit yeah. the ground it's it's you know it's a different story so yeah I know it's only three months so so I'm not sure how much is there but yeah what's what's changed since you since you kicked off like um what's changed since i kicked off i mean i think it's all still as i imagined it when i kicked off yeah um, i don't think that really a lot has changed at this point okay cool. um i to get you back in another um, yeah another year, so. yeah yeah i mean for now it is mm. like it's essentially kind of like a two-prong approach looking after the accountant's clients and mm. then trying to build up my own Mm-hmm. Um, string, you know, my own kind of flow of clients off my own um, kind of work as well. So yeah. that's the great thing is I've got kind of like the training wheels on with that account that's sending me the business yeah, the while thing, yeah. I figure out how to drum up a bit of my own business. So, yeah. yeah. And how's that process going? Because you didn't have to do that 
No, I didn't have to do that at, um, at FITS. Uh, I, so that is I'm still, I mean, I'm still trying to figure out how it's going to all work. But at the moment, I'm um, getting involved with Ladies Finance Club. Oh, yeah. Um, so Girl power. Yes, yes. There's huge appetite for it. We need a man's finance club. Yeah. Oh, the, the whole world is a man's finance club. Yeah, that's, that's probably that's a probably podcast easy. for another day. I but. Know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so ladies, <laughs> <laughs> ladies finance club. So I'm hoping that by kind of uh, giving my time and, and speaking at these sorts of events, potentially that could be a way of um, generating some leads. Mm. So uh, our first event was on the 7th of August. So I will cool. keep you posted. Is it women only? Or? Um, anyone's welcome. But the, so the event is Ladies Finance Club, putting on Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Oh, that sounds and, like right up my alley. Um, if you want to sit in a room with 80 highly intelligent women, oh, yeah. It's, oh, that good. yeah, it's probably not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was only a lot of time cheap. Yeah. But I think that those, uh, doing those presentations in, in all seriousness, it, even if you never got a client out of it, it forces you to really hone your message. So I know yeah. that like, I've done a lot of workshops since, since before I started the business and, yeah. and since I kicked off and I found that that, because you've said the same thing, like you say it in meetings and doing meetings with clients and strategy meetings and advice yeah. meetings and yeah. Yeah. You, engagement meetings and intro meetings, you, you learn stuff. But when you have to do it at scale, you've got to be more succinct, you've got to be more on point and yeah. you've got to be more engaging because you've got to engage everyone. everyone. Yeah, yeah. So... I've found that to be enormously beneficial yeah, in, okay. in just shaping the, the key messages and how to wrap them up in a way, yeah, that is engaging and gets people keeps gets people and keeps people interested interested as well. Yeah, well, I'm, so I'm working on it at the moment and I don't know how it's going yet. <laughs> I haven't got any feedback, but um, right. yeah, we'll we'll see. I'll let you know how it goes. Just take heaps of photos and put them on the internet everywhere. Right, that's okay. one of the biggest lessons that I've learned. That yep. again, if you never get a person from a workshop, that's fine as long yep. as you post about it everywhere. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, we get a, we get a heap of people from uh, from the broader networks that yep. they see the stuff. And I think there are so many people out there these days that uh, people see you and they're like you. You know, you your, there's your business. You make a post. Okay, there's you. They see you in a room full of people. They go, oh, maybe Rachel's not crazy. Yeah. And they yeah, see like yeah. you in another room of people and another room of people and another room of people. They're going, people are throwing things at you. So yeah. they're going, oh, well, less crazy. Each time yeah, less crazy. Yeah, and then, yeah. then they go, well, oh, she's actually probably not crazy at all. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I should I talk to her. Yeah. yeah. So no, I think, good advice. All right. So lots of photos and put them all over social media. Yeah. All right. So it's that. been a big one for us. We got a yeah. lot of business out of that sort of stuff because people connect with the same, with the message that, that's there so yeah yeah so um tell me what so you, you talked so not too much has changed but is there anything that you found that uh that worked that you didn't think would work um uh probably the opposite it's more like things are not working than i thought would work in some okay instances. well tell me that, that was yeah. my next question okay well <laughs> i mean the things that are working are things that i sort of expected to work um but I guess, you know, some of the things that, like, I'm still trying to figure out. So I thought that, um, like, one example, like, cash flow and budgeting, I thought would be really critical for, like, people our age group, right? But I haven't yet. And so, I've, you know, looked at sort of all the technology that can help you kind of um, provide that service. But even the people that need it, I'm finding are not really engaging with it. Or the people that need it the most are the least likely to engage with it, mm, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So that's one that I'm, and, and I feel like that's, you know, that's, that's like, that's the stuff that, Living within your means and getting your budget right, particularly at our age, that's what's going to make you rich. Like investing mm. is the sexy stuff. Yeah. We like to talk about it at the pub, but it's it's sort of, you know, the boring stuff that's actually going to make a difference, I think, in your life, particularly yes. at our age. And the but painful stuff. Yeah, and that's the hard stuff. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's the stuff that's really hard to stick with. Funny, so, probably. yeah, so it's actually, I guess I'm trying to find, I'm still trying to figure out how to get the people that need that sort of advice mm. to really take it. So, yeah, I, I find that that's a funny. It's like a gym membership, you know, and, and uh, I'm probably the perfect candidate for that. You, you have a gym membership, but you don't go for, yeah. like, you know, why we have an like, obesity epidemic in the country because people know that they should eat properly and exercise and do yeah. the right things and be healthy, but they don't because it's like chips taste good and, um, you know, Netflix it's is awesome. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Uh, 
So I think it's it's, a, it's an ongoing challenge that, yeah. that we see, and some and we find that we, I when I so when I started my business, I was like, oh, this model is great. Like clearly I'm biased, right? So it's yeah. like a model, but and the clients are so engaged and everyone's so happy and they're going, oh yeah, I want that property and that holiday and that yeah, and I want to retire early and I want to have all that money that you say that I can have if I do these things. Yeah. But when you hit the ground, yeah. Then people go, oh yeah, but I want that. I want to go to the pub, and then I still want to have Uber Eats, and then yeah. I, of course I need that handbag or the suit or and my hair costs like three hundred bucks every six weeks. And exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's just the constant sort of excuses and uh, and you know and reasons and ultimately like sometimes and I still have a few clients where we just have to say like, guys, like what are you doing? Like, yeah. you, like there's nothing. There's no solution for this. So I was actually talking to a client just yesterday, and they they got a lot of debt, and then they started making some really good progress with their yeah, debt. Yeah. And then we got a, a, an accountant for their bills, and I noticed that they've been spending it up on all the all the shops. And I was like, "What are you doing?" Like, yeah, yeah. And, and like, how, what, how did they respond to that? They're like, "Oh yeah, we know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we know we shouldn't." And I was like, "Well, you know, you're just starting to do all this work." I was like, "Now we're going to have to take money from your savings." And yeah. that you've just built up, that you're so happy that you've built up to put yeah. into this account. Otherwise, this account's going to run out of money. Yeah. I was like, I suggest you cut up that card. And she went and got the card and cut it up on the phone call and then yes. sent me a photo of the card in the bin, which was, uh, which was good. So, Well, that's good. That's really good. That's yeah. good like, progress then with that client. Yeah. yeah. But some people, I think some people, if they're not ready, like these guys probably would, they would have been happy to never be ready, but they got themselves in such a pickle that they then they, they, they had to. Yeah. They had to take action, right? Yeah. And, uh, but I, otherwise, yeah, people, what I was saying is that people are all so pumped up and I'm going, holy crap, I'm like, this business model, this is going to be amazing because yeah. everyone's so engaged that yeah. I'm going to have these clients forever. Like, they will never leave. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But what I've found is that we we actually have like a 20% drop-off rate, which right. is fairly high, yeah. I thought. Yeah. Um, but 5% five, 5% of them are people that they their stuff changes and their um, – they're, they're, they're something is they don't they no, no longer need our service. Yeah, but you have fifteen percent of people that just don't want to commit. Don't want to do it. Yeah, which is a shame because they people are spending you know five thousand bucks for a financial plan and then yeah. and then time goes on and they realise that oh shit I'm not prepared to put in the work. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, and they're probably the ones that need it the most. For sure, yeah. absolutely. So that's I guess that's one of the, that's been one of the challenges in like in starting the business. One of the things I wanted to do was work with. Our age group, yeah. Mo- like one of the most important things is that. But yeah. I'm finding it hard to, like, to make it stick. With my experience being with like high net worths and you mm. know people that are about to retire, it's not a conversation generally about Uber Eats. <laughs> it's, it's a different conversation. So yeah, that's been the challenge I think, and that's what I'm still working out. Well, I uh, was saying just before to another person that we had on the podcast that. Just uh, just go speak to five advisors and yep. then pick the best bits from each and what works for you and uh, yeah yeah give it a crack yeah yeah well I'll have to I'll do that <laughs> <laughs> my homework <laughs> so uh, speak to Clayton Clayton Daniel is the, yeah. the boss of cash flow and, right okay uh, I basically just stole his system and right okay. gave it some detail given because his level of detail he's, is up here so yeah all right I'll hit him up yeah it's a it's a journey but it, yeah. it's a worthwhile one I think the cash flow stuff is, is super important or actually getting people results. And it makes it easy yeah. for you to see that they're getting stuff as well. And it also, like, I mean, if they're, if they're not doing that, then they're not going to st- – like, you can't really recommend anything, like investments or anything. Like, Well, if they don't – yeah, if they if don't they have a plan, the strategy is worse. Yeah, exactly. Because if you don't know that – people go, oh, yeah, I save 1000 bucks a month. And if you only invest that and they actually <laughs> only save 500 then, you know, that's going to be like, mm. not going to work out. So, yeah. It's the future. It's the future, people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what um, what would you say for somebody somebody that's clearly spent a lot of time sort of formulating the business and, yeah. and model and, and offer and, and now sort of a few months in, what would be your top tip for somebody that was that was thinking of either launching their own thing or trying to reshape their service within an existing business? Yeah. Uh, or, or working with inside a business trying to create their sort of unique yeah. offering? Yeah. Um, that's a big question. That's a hard one. Um, <laughs> well, what do you think the most important thing to get right is to create a compelling service offering? 
Um, I think for me, I I really just wanted to like connect with people and feel like I was able to like really make a difference in their lives. So I guess for me, I've been just trying to figure out what is actually going to make, you know, have a bit of an impact for people. Mm -hmm. Um, Trying to really think about like as a consumer of all sorts of services, what makes, what wows me and what, what excites Mm. me and therefore like, and how can I do that? So like when like occasionally it happens and and you get um, sort of, you have like a sales experience and it just like blows your mind. Mm. That was so much easier than I expected to be. Yeah. The example I'm thinking of right now is um, my website developer, right? So I was like sort of looking at different um, website developers and trying to decide who to go with. And I ended up going with this, um, this uh, girl, um, Kat Hughes, um, at Face Creative. So she's awesome if anyone's looking for okay. But her what is it? Face Creative? Face Creative. Face um, and her, this service I used was called Live by Five. Right. And so that was where basically I sat down with her and she tutored me in how to build oh. a WordPress website, right. okay. which was Live by Five. Right. Wow. Um, which was great. Yeah. But what happened initially to sign up with her was so seamless. Like yeah. I received... So I said, yeah, sounds good. We had a conversation on the phone. She sent me a proposal and it was like a digital signature. Here's your payment details, all of your terms and conditions. Like it just was like tick, 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 tick. Yeah. And that whole sign-up process, which I, in my experience as a financial advisor, could take like two meetings or three meetings and yeah. signatures and scanning stuff and you forgot to do this and blah, 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 was done like just through this click, 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 click. Yeah. And I just thought that's... That is that makes me so happy as someone who's about to use her services to not particularly because I was at home and didn't have a printer, didn't have a scanner, all mm. that sort of stuff. To just be able to do it so easily really impressed me. And actually, everything about her service has been really easy. Yeah, and like she, I can tell that she puts a lot of effort into removing any friction whatsoever. Awesome. And that for me was like that's kind of what I want mm. to do for clients. Like I mm. want to, I just want to make it as easy as possible for them to work with me because I think that'll make, like, I mean, that I think would, would make them pleased as clients. It yeah. also probably means it's easy for me to work with them. Yep. So, yeah, that's a kind of a roundabout answer. But mm. um, I guess that's sort of how I'm trying to think about things in this early stage with um, the business is, okay, this is how I've always done things. But, but how, like, how does the client see this? And yeah. Do they value it? You guys throw it out the window, right? Is it is it good or is it just what we do? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I think that that the you want to rethink and go well, if we were starting from scratch. What would that look like? It's yeah. Like saying, well, this is what we do. Well, how do we make it better? But yeah. I, I also think that these days now we we're not. Um, you've got to reduce that friction from yeah. what you do because people just won't. They'll tolerate it to a degree, yeah. But but it, if it gets too hard, and arguably it's it's historically been way too hard, that yeah. um, people just fail. Yeah, and 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 often not even intentionally. It's not like they've made a conscious decision and said, you know what, um, I've had enough of this back and forth over email. I'm yeah, cease this now. They might still have good intentions. They might still be like, yeah, I want to work with her. Yeah. But it's all just become too hard and life's gotten too busy and then you get, like, bumped down the list yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'll get to that. And then it's like, oh, well, if that a long time and then I'll yeah. forget about it. Doesn't it. Happen. So, yeah, stuff like stuff like that I'm trying to just um, be really conscious of. Love it. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, look, I I think some, some great tips there and I, I reckon uh, you talk about the challenges of uh, starting a small business all day. But a yeah. couple of quick ones for you before we wrap up. What, firstly, what was your biggest um, stuff up or mistake or oops moment? Uh, so um, I had my business name and logo, as I said to you, one of the mm-hmm. first things I did. Um, so I got everything organised, website was about to go live, business cards were in the mail, company name registered, everything. My husband, I didn't know at the time, but he'd organised for my mum and my sisters to come around and have champagne with me for like a little launch. Yeah. And, okay. um, like, it's all literally just about to press a button. And my stepdad, was a lawyer, called and was like, Rach, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean, what am I doing? And he said, there's a business with the same name as you doing the same thing on the other side of Sydney, like in, in Sydney City. Oh, no. And I was like, and he was like, how did, like, it was like, you can't, 
you can't do this. And I, was, and I had missed it because it had taken me, as I said, it had taken me like the six months yeah. to actually go from like coming up with a name to actually launching. Yeah. And in that time they had, I guess, maybe they, maybe they were, they'd been around for not very long, but maybe they were kind of a few pages back in Google searches. Right. So I hadn't kind of found it. <clears throat> anyway, so that felt a bit like um, running into a glass door. Yeah. And I just was like, <laughs> oh, it just no. stopped. Like everything yeah. just stopped in its tracks. And so, yeah, I had to come up with a new name, new logo, oh. all of that sort of stuff, having, you know, spent months putting it all together. So that was like a massive boost moment. Yeah. And I felt like the biggest idiot and I was devastated. But <laughs> live and learn and yeah. um, I'm actually, you know, I think the new name works better anyway. So What was the old name? The old name was Flourish Private Wealth okay. and the new one is oh, Flourish. Yeah. yeah, I like yeah. it. So, yeah, it's... um. It, yeah, good lesson, like, you know, do your homework. <laughs> Figure yeah. out if anyone is already doing the same thing with the same name yeah. in the same city. For sure, you know, the IP is a big one, and especially yeah. there's a lot of so much out there these days as well. So. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that was, that was yeah. And I ended up coming up with a name which was just a made-up word, as you know now. Yeah. So that helped because um, the domain was available, yes. yeah. the word you need. It's not like, yeah. you know, it's not a crowded kind of, little spot around that you know that word there's only you know so many words in the english language that you know you can <laughs> use so yeah having something made up worked nice up, i like it better. yeah cool yeah. but that was yeah that was a that was a rough day <laughs> <laughs> i can imagine yeah. uh good so um next question what's the best what's the best uh piece of advice you ever received um i've had so much good advice to be honest um You've got me on the spot. Um, don't say, uh, don't say the uh, the tips that I gave you about posting photos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess the best piece of advice I've had was um, just to like yeah, take it slow, not get ahead of myself in terms of taking on more clients than I can manage and dropping the ball. Um, particularly with the juggle going on with home and, and work. Mm. Um, I'm really conscious of not burning out because um, there is a, I do have a lot on my plate right now. I'm not sleeping most nights. You know, the kids are still up and stuff like that. So yeah. you know, just keeping the <clears throat> keeping the workload coming in at the right pace so that I'm not, like, blowing, like, you know, there's no crash and burn, basically. Very important. I've yeah. got all this to learn with the <laughs> new family coming on, but, uh, yeah. you know. So the sanity is, is very important because it allows you to do your job better. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah, <laughs> and enjoy everything as well. So I'm no good to anyone if I'm, you know, in the fetal position or the corner of crime. <laughs> 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 so, so, yeah, that's the one. Nice. And last question, what's your spirit animal? Oh, God. <laughs> um, what's my spirit animal? It's not a really good spirit animal, to be honest, but um, I... I, do you remember your dreams, like when you wake up in the morning? Sometimes. I had a dream the other night that uh, Yang and I had our kid and then we both looked at him and we don't know what the sex is, but yeah. we, I was a boy and we both looked at him and said, it looks like a Benjamin. And we <laughs> called the kid Benjamin. And I yeah, said, Benjamin. I, I was like, Yang, I woke up and I had these dreams. She said, we are not fucking doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my spirit oh, see, I'm still with Benjamin, <laughs> it's creative. Um, I, I dream about whales all the time. Oh, yeah, right. So I don't know what, what sort means. killer whale or all, 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 all different sorts, like oh, really? Killer whales, yeah, multiple killer whales, different types yeah, of whales. Yeah, whales, yeah, I don't know. It's just one Whoa, of those things. you are yeah. twisted. I know it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> nice. Well, Rach, thank you very much for taking the time. Some, uh, some absolute gold there. So, uh, yeah, Great. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.